However, we physicists say that the universe was created in a Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. But then the question is, why did it bang? What set off the bang? The James Webb Telescope has just revealed hundreds of ancient galaxies that could be among the first members of the universe. A leap from only a handful that were previously known to exist at the time. As early as 600 million years after the Big Bang, these very young galaxies showed complex structures and clusters of star formation. This study is part of an international collaboration called the JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, JADES for short, which gathered a month's worth of observations from two tiny patches in the sky, one in the Ursa Minor constellation, and another in the direction of the Fornax cluster. Within this region were over 700 newly discovered young galaxies that revealed what the cosmos looked like in its earliest. It is not expected that the early universe will be able to organize itself that quickly. These galaxies theoretically should not have had time to form. Then how is this possible? Another team from the JADES program that has been studying galaxies that existed between 500 to 850 million years after the Big Bang, thinks it has an answer to this question that has been unanswered ever since James Webb's first discovery of a ridiculously old galaxy. The team studied the signs of star formation in those ancient galaxies, which provided a look into how starlight ionized the gas within those galaxies. The team found that one in six galaxies at the time showed extreme line emissions in the galaxy's spectra, a feature that atoms ionized by starlight radiate when they have cooled down and combined with other molecules. These extreme emission lines are actually known to be relatively common in the early universe post-Big Bang. Almost every single galaxy that has been found so far shows these unusually strong emission line signatures, indicating intense recent star formation. These early galaxies were very good at creating hot, massive stars. And that's how all of a sudden, you would have tens of suns worth of solar masses being assembled all at once in these early galaxies. NASA's multi-billion dollar telescope had also spotted six gigantic galaxies, each roughly the size of our own Milky Way. Recently, a group of galaxies from the dawn of the universe that are so massive they shouldn't exist. The six gargantuan galaxies, which contain almost as many stars as the Milky Way, despite forming only 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang, have been dubbed universe breakers by the team of astronomers that spotted them. That's because, if they're real, the discovery calls our entire understanding of galaxy formation into question. All of a sudden we realize that we may have to rewrite all the textbooks about the beginning of the universe. Now, it takes many billions of years to create a galaxy, like the Milky Way galaxy, with 100 billion stars, many billions of years old. But the James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang that are up to 10 times bigger than the Milky Way galaxy. While scientists don't know exactly when the first clumps of stars began to merge into the beginnings of the galaxies we see today, cosmologists have previously estimated that the process began slowly taking shape within the first few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Currently accepted theories suggest that one to two billion years into the universe's life, these early proto-galaxies reached adolescence forming into dwarf galaxies that began devouring each other to grow into ones like our own Milky Way galaxy. Because light travels at a fixed speed through the vacuum of space, the deeper we look into the universe, the more remote light we are able to intercept, and the further back in time we see. By using the James Webb Space Telescope to peer roughly 13.5 billion years into the past, the astronomers found that enormous galaxies had already burst into life very quickly after the Big Bang, when the universe was just 3% of its current age. This forces us to rethink everything we know. The galaxies are so massive that they are in tension with 99% of the models for cosmology. 
This means that either the models will need to be altered, or scientific understanding of galaxy formation requires a fundamental rethink. Either way, it is a shocking discovery by James Webb, yet again. The Milky Way forms about one to two new stars every year. These galaxies would have to be forming hundreds of new stars a year for the entire history of the universe. If even one of these galaxies is real, it will push against the limits of our understanding of cosmology. Right now, all evidence points to these celestial objects being galaxies, but the astronomers haven't ruled out that some of them could be enormous quasars or supermassive black holes. Regardless of that, the amount of mass discovered means that the known mass in stars at this period of our universe is up to 100 times greater than was previously thought to exist. Even if sample size is halved, this is still an astounding change. Previous imaging of the early universe by the Hubble Space Telescope didn't detect the giant galaxies, but JWST is about 100 times more powerful than Hubble. The Space Observatory was designed to read the earliest chapters of the universe's history in its faintest glimmers of light and has been delivering on its promise ever since its launch. This is not the first time James Webb has forced us to rethink our understanding of the cosmos. Only last year, it made a groundbreaking discovery about the Big Bang Theory. Orbit Beyond the Blue The James Webb Space Telescope needs no introduction. Not now. It is currently the star of space exploration. It's been more than a year since Webb's foray into space, and it has treated us to some stunning images and visuals. So, when we have such a powerful lens pointed toward the deepest regions of the universe, our definition of surprise is bound to be slightly altered when it comes to astronomy pics. It's no longer astonishing, really, when NASA's James Webb Space Telescope reveals yet another brilliant, ancient piece of the cosmos that forces us to rethink everything. At this point, our expectations are high, and we want nothing less from the trailblazing machine. Instead, when the telescope sends back a jaw-dropping space image, it now draws out more of a Webb has done it again feeling. But, still, our jaws legitimately drop every single time. And, it has happened again. Webb strikes again. And to a pretty extreme degree this time. Recently, scientists presented Webb's brilliant view of a galaxy cluster merging around a massive black hole that houses a rare quasar. Yes, you heard that right. This is an incomprehensibly bright jet of light spewing from the void's chaotic center. There's a lot going on here and the scientists behind the find believe it could escalate even further. Andrew Vayner, a Johns Hopkins astronomer and co-author of a study about the image said in a statement, We think something dramatic is about to happen in these systems. What's especially fascinating about this portrait is that the quasar here is considered to be an extremely red quasar which means it's super far away from us and therefore physically rooted in a primitive region of space that falls near the beginning of time. And while the image may look like patches of color to the untrained eye, but to the trained eye everything about the image is complex, mesmerizing and unbelievable. And the monster of a black hole at its center only makes it even more of a groundbreaking discovery. In order to understand the image and the grandiose of what we are witnessing, let's deconstruct the image. First, we've got an extremely red quasar. A quasar, a special type of active galactic nucleus, is a compact region with a supermassive black hole at the center of a galaxy. Gas falling into a supermassive black hole makes the quasar bright enough to outshine all of the stars in the galaxy combined. It is extraordinarily red not just because of its intrinsic red color, 
but also because the galaxy's light has been redshifted by its vast distance. This quasar is one of the most powerful known galactic nuclei that's been seen at such an extreme distance. Astronomers had speculated that the quasar's extreme emission could cause a galactic wind, pushing free gas out of its host galaxy and possibly greatly influencing future star formation there. Using the observations from near spec, the team was able to confirm three galactic companions to this quasar and show how they are connected. Archival data from Hubble hints that there may be even more. The three confirmed galaxies are orbiting each other at incredibly high speeds, an indication that a great deal of mass is present. When combined with how closely they are packed into the region around this quasar, the team believes this marks one of the densest known areas of galaxy formation in the early universe. We could be seeing a region where two massive halos of dark matter are merging together. With this image, Webb has essentially uncovered a surprising cosmic knot in the early universe. Talking about galaxy mergers, there's another one happening as we speak. A merger like no other. A galactic merger between the Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies. The Andromeda galaxy is the closest spiral galaxy to the Milky Way. It is only visible as a fuzzy patch of light in the dark skies and can be seen only if one is consciously looking for it. The Andromeda and the Milky Way, while engaging in a cosmic dance, will collide. The Andromeda galaxy is already in transit and hurtling towards the Milky Way at a speed of 70 miles per second. The two galaxies are 2.5 million light-years from each other and hence, the collision is likely to occur 5 billion years from now and new research done on Project Amiga in which the Hubble Space Telescope was used, has confirmed this news. NASA has called this the most comprehensive study of the halo surrounding a galaxy. This is because all galaxies are ensconced within galactic halos filled with gas, dust, and stray stars are not easily visible, and hence difficult to investigate. But these astronomers were able to measure the size of the Andromeda galaxy by examining the amount of light it absorbed from the background quasars. Surprisingly, they found that the Andromeda's halo goes far beyond its visible boundaries. In fact, they discovered that it goes as much as half the distance to our Milky Way. While astronomers are finding it difficult to measure the characteristics of the Milky Way's halo, they believe that it would be very similar to that of the Andromeda given their apparent likeness. And therefore they came to the conclusion that the faint halos of the galaxies have started to touch one another, inevitably setting in motion the path towards a collision. A series of studies show that rather than simply bypassing each other, like most cosmic collisions do, Andromeda and Milky Way galaxies will in fact merge to form a single elliptical or football-shaped galaxy. However, these two galaxies are not going to be the only ones playing the game. One large galaxy in the local group of galaxies, or our neighboring galaxies in the rough distance of about 5 million light-years of space, called the Triangulum Galaxy will also join in. Although the Triangulum may not join the actual merger, it may, at some point, strike the Milky Way while it is busy undergoing the cosmic collision. Often, when collisions happen, galaxies simply pass each other, like to ghosts at night. This is so because the stars within the galaxies are so far apart that collisions are almost nearly impossible. But when Andromeda and Milky Way collide, there will be consequences. It is predicted that the Sun will be thrown in a new region of our galaxy. What a majestic sight it will be to behold. Sadly, none of us will be alive to watch the cosmic dance, but aren't we glad in a way too. Orbit Beyond the Blue In 1924, the world was introduced to the Andromeda Galaxy, 
defying the belief that the Milky Way is the only gigantic galaxy spiraling in the enormous universe. This discovery excited astronomers and triggered the pursuit of new galaxies, prompting that we might not be alone. With every passing decade, gigantic telescopes like Hubble and James Webb were created to hunt extraterrestrial galaxies. Ever since the Webb telescope was launched, it has been making headlines for eyeing thousands of colossal galaxies. Now, Shocking new findings have been made by the James Webb Telescope that could change everything we know and force us to sit up and reassess all our cosmological theories. Groundbreaking discoveries that could change everything. Continuing on its streak of making discoveries that question the Big Bang, the James Webb Space Telescope has found the most distant galaxy cluster ever seen, at 30 billion light years away. Researchers say it's probably one of the biggest clusters in the universe by now. All seven galaxies in the clump had been observed before with the Hubble Space Telescope, but scientists didn't know how far away they were or whether they were truly bound together. Because light takes time to travel from distant objects to Webb's position orbiting the Sun, the telescope sees these galaxies as they were about 650 million years after the Big Bang. As we currently see the protocluster, it appears small. But, if its light could reach us instantaneously, letting us see what it looks like today, it is very likely it would be colossal, having gravitationally roped in thousands of other galaxies. The researchers' simulations hint that this protocluster may now be one of the most enormous clusters in the universe. Recently, the James Webb Telescope also discovered a minuscule galaxy, 13 billion years in the past, that has given rise to new stars at an exceptionally high rate for its tiny size. It is said to be the smallest galaxy ever discovered at this distance. In a groundbreaking discovery, a team of researchers from the University of Minnesota used the James Webb Telescope to peek into more than 13 billion years into the past, to discover an extraordinary tiny galaxy that has generated stars at an extreme rate for its size. This tiny galaxy is one of the smallest ever discovered at this distance, around 500 million years after the Big Bang. If this doesn't excite you enough, then you should know that this tiny galaxy could potentially help astronomers to understand more about the galaxies that were present millions of years ago just after the universe burst into existence. This galaxy is far beyond the reach of all telescopes except the James Webb, and these first of their kind observations of the distant galaxy are spectacular, said Patrick Kelly, senior author of this paper. The galaxy is roughly a millionth in the volume of the Milky Way, but interestingly it is still forming the same number of stars every year. That is insane. If you wonder how the James Webb Telescope can observe such tiny details in a wide enough field to capture the entire galaxy cluster at once, it is mainly because of a phenomenon called gravitational lensing. Gravitational lensing uses lenses that bend and magnify the light of the mass, present in the galaxy or galaxy cluster. Thanks to gravitational lensing, this tiny galaxy appeared 20 times brighter than it would have appeared. Mind you, this is apparently the first time it was possible to look into most of the way back to the Big Bang, and James Webb Telescope, with its galaxy hunting abilities, has made it look easier than ever before. In July 2022, astronomers found Glass C13, which was the frontrunner to be the oldest galaxy in the observable universe. But, a new candidate entered the chat, and it was so far away, that it could break the models of our universe. In a preprint paper, released in August 2022, Rowan Naidu, an astrophysicist based at Harvard's, and Smithson Nyan's jointly operated Center for Astrophysics, has detailed another distant galaxy candidate, from one of Webb Telescope's early release science programs, known as CERS 1749. It's an extremely bright galaxy that, if confirmed, 
would have existed just 220 million years after the Big Bang, and it could also rewrite our understanding of the cosmos. But there was a bloody huge catch. CEERS 1749 could be one of the most distant galaxies we've ever seen, or it could be lurking much closer to home. Essentially, the data seemed to indicate to possible places for the galaxy to be, and we wouldn't know which one is correct without a lot more observation. That's how it earned the title of Schrodinger's Galaxy Candidate. How can a galaxy like Schrodinger seem to be in two different places? Well, it's all about redshift. To determine how far away a galaxy lies, astronomers study wavelengths of light. Specifically, they are interested in a phenomenon of light known as redshift. In a nutshell, light waves leaving distant galaxies get stretched over time, shifting the waves down the electromagnetic spectrum and making them more, well, red. So, ultraviolet light leaving a galaxy like Schrodinger won't reach Earth as ultraviolet light. Instead, it will be redshifted down into the infrared, which is great for us because that's just the kind of light Webb searches for. And, Webb has various filters, looking at distinct wavelengths of infrared. In examining a galaxy like Schrodinger, you can flick through the wavelengths like you might flick through a photo album. On the first few pages, few red wavelengths, you won't see a thing. Then, as you turn through and the wavelengths become more red, the ghost of a galaxy appears. In the most red-shifted wavelengths, at the back of the album, the galaxy is a clearly defined object. This would also mean we might need to rethink our models of how galaxies evolved in the earliest days of the universe. Galaxies from that long ago should not be this bright, at least according to the model we currently use to explain our cosmos. But maybe we don't need to break physics just yet. It might be that Schrodinger is actually a satellite galaxy of one of its more massive neighbors, and it could be much closer to us. Another group of researchers also studied this exact same galaxy from the early release data, on the same day. Jorge Zavola, an astrophysicist at Alma Japan, and his team, added to the JWST data, with data from an Earth-based telescopes in the French Alps and Hawaii. They came to the conclusion that Schrodinger might be an imposter, masquerading as a high redshift galaxy, when it's actually a much closer, dusty galaxy undergoing rapid star formation. Scientists found themselves in a bind, since the data suggested two potential locations for Schrodinger, and no one was yet certain which one was accurate because further investigation and observation were still needed. In particular, spectroscopy will allow astrophysicists to scrutinize its redshift more accurately. The only barrier now was time, getting enough time on telescopes around the world to study Schrodinger and solve the puzzle. But hold on, Schrodinger was only a part of the massive image release by Webb. The images indicated that massive galaxies were already forming in the earliest days of the epoch of reionization, when the plasma that evenly filled the early universe collapsed into more familiar stars and galaxies. Despite its tremendous size and all the ancient galaxies contained within it, the image was just a tiny slice of the sky. Atmospheres of exoplanets that lie in the habitable zone of their stars, artificial light around exoplanets, and study of the moons of Jupiter and Saturn are only a few of the several investigations the super-powerful telescope will run. Speaking of exoplanets, Webb clicked the very first image of an exoplanet. Astronomers revealed the first photograph of an exoplanet taken by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope. The image showed the bright blob of a world seven times heavier than Jupiter, that orbits a star nearly 400 light-years away. The groundbreaking result was the latest in a slew of early exoplanet findings from the telescope, and a test of technologies that will enable direct imaging of Earth-like planets by future space telescopes. It's exhilarating to say the least.
to photograph the hot, young giant, hip 65 for 126B. JWSD blocked the light of its host star using a small mask known as a coronagraph. This revealed the orbiting planet, which was thousands of times fainter, like a firefly around a searchlight. HIP 65 for 126 b orbited about 100 times farther from its star than Earth does the Sun, taking 630 years to complete an orbit. This distance meant it's easier to see the planet against the glare of the star, that coupled with the planet's extreme heat and brightness it had a scorching temperature of about 900 degrees Celsius, a fever left over from its formation just 14 million years ago, which made it a prime target for direct imaging. HIP 65-426B's surface features weren't visible in the image, but Biller said it would probably look banded like Jupiter, with belts caused by variations in temperature and composition, and might have spots in its atmosphere caused by storms or vortices. The giant planet was inhospitable to life as we knew it, but it represented a class of large planets that scientists are eager to learn more about. Every week, we wait with bated breath for Webb to show us our cosmos like never seen before. And surely, with more discoveries, more challenges to the existing model of the universe will come forward. After all, what is science if not questioning and rethinking everything we know? But what do I know? Orbit Beyond the Blue The James Webb Space Telescope is as much of a telescope as it is a kind of looking glass. As the world celebrates its one-year anniversary this month, it's important to remember that Webb is like humanity's time machine. Every ancient star and every early galaxy we look at through Webb is us getting to witness the growing years of the universe. Fun fact. The senior project scientist for the telescope at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, Dr. Jane Rigby, revealed that this was the elevator pitch for James Webb Space Telescope. We're going to show you the baby pictures of the universe. And indeed it has. Before JWST, astronomers knew of only a small handful of candidate galaxies that existed in the first billion years after the Big Bang. Within the past year, hundreds of them, bigger and brighter than expected, packed with forming stars swirling around supermassive black holes, have been confirmed. One of Webb's science goals was also to help us understand our origins. Where do we belong in the grand scheme of the cosmos and its workings? As conscious beings, looking at ourselves through the lens of astronomy is known one of the most grounding, humbling, and contemplative experiences. We're lucky to be alive at a time when we get to witness the cosmos like never before, albeit vicariously, through the eyes of Webb. And a stunning discovery that most beautifully fits this aspect of the James Webb has just come through. The James Webb Space Telescope has detected the earliest known carbon dust in a galaxy ever. And understanding the gravity of this discovery gives it a whole new dimension. One that possibly links to our own origins. James Webb Space Telescope made its first detection of diamond-like carbon dust in the universe's earliest stars. The discovery suggests that the earliest galaxies formed more quickly after the Big Bang than previously thought. But we have heard of that almost a hundred times now with a hundred different galaxies that Webb found. So what sets this one apart? The fact that carbon is the backbone of all life. Carbon is the main element in organic compounds, so carbon is essential to life on Earth. Without it, life as we know it could not stand a chance. Using the powerful space telescope, a team of astronomers has spotted carbon in 10 different galaxies that existed as early as just 1 billion years after the Big Bang. 
The detection of carbon dust so soon after the Big Bang could also shake up theories surrounding the chemical evolution of the universe. This is because the processes that create and disperse heavier elements like this should take longer to build up in galaxies than the age of these young galaxies at the time the James Webb Space Telescope sees them. The early universe was made up of mostly hydrogen and helium with tiny traces of some heavier elements, meaning the first stars and galaxies should have the same composition of just these light elements, not complex, organic elements. Conventional models of the universe's chemical evolution suggest that heavy elements like carbon and oxygen are forged in the nuclear furnaces at the heart of stars. When the first stars had run out of the fuel for nuclear fusion and reached the very end of their lives, they exploded in supernovas dispersing the material they had forged through the cosmos. This stellar matter is integrated into interstellar dust. Hence the famous knowledge bomb that the late Carl Sagan dropped in his original award-winning TV series Cosmos. We are made of star stuff. Because we literally are. When dense patches of this dust collapsed, this material became the building blocks of the next generation of stars, which are thus richer in heavy elements and sit in similarly enriched galaxies. The cycle went on and on until we came around to be. And it continues to this day, and will continue long after we are gone. This is what we have known to be true. But the new findings challenge this theory. The galaxies where they saw the dust are estimated to be somewhere in the region of 10 million years old. That implies there must be a creation and dispersal method for carbon that works on a relatively short time scale. Not only do these findings exemplify the kind of science that wouldn't have been possible before the JWST, it ultimately raises questions about our own cosmic history. The wavelengths of light emitted by early galaxies are stretched by the universe's expansion as it travels across billions of light years, thus taking billions of years to reach us. This results in ultraviolet light from galaxies being shifted down the electromagnetic spectrum, a process called redshift. The more distant, and thus earlier, the galaxy, the more extreme the redshift is, meaning light from the very first galaxies is stretched out to infrared wavelengths. Light from these galaxies has been crossing the cosmos for as long as 12.8 billion years, and is now infrared light. The JWST is the most sensitive infrared telescope ever sent out into space, and the only one capable of not just finding, but also resolving features like these carbon fingerprints in the light from such distant galaxies. Regarding the future of this research, scientists explained that there are two possible avenues to explore. The first is that, on the observational side, the JWST is collecting more data, so we can look at larger samples of galaxies and see if we can learn anything linking this carbon fingerprint with specific properties of the galaxies. On the theoretical side, scientists may now start to think about what astrophysical objects and events could produce carbon on a short time scale. There is still a lot of work to be done, but with the web and tremendous work of researchers, we're in safe hands. The observatory was launched on Christmas in 2021, and scientists spent the next six months prepping the telescope for action. Unfolding its sunshield and the honeycomb-like array of golden mirrors, then running countless tests of the four instruments used to observe the cosmos. When it was ready, Webb embarked on its journey to peer into the depths of the universe. NASA put out for science goals for James Webb. And one of them happened to be trying to look back in time, as far as we possibly can, to see some of these first galaxies that ever formed. A year and a half after its launch, that goal has remained the most exciting part till now. We're continuing to push the boundaries of how much further we can go, and how much we can push this telescope to see as far as it possibly can. Though the telescope is operated by NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency, 
This is the telescope serves the whole of humanity. And we do know that for sure. Beyond the Blue